Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Billy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the U.S. Open, and you're on Billiard Club Network. This time, we'd like to introduce our officials for this match. Our official rack girl is Miss Tasha Fibbs. Can we have a hand for Tasha Fibbs, please? Thank you. And our official ring card girl is Miss Heather, Heather Evans. And at this time, we'd like to introduce the principals for this match coming out of the red corner, sponsored on tour by Puyat Sports, player representative for Bear Cues of Germany. Twice he has won the $50,000 winner-take-all challenge of champions, a former number one ranked player in the world on the Camel Series. Please welcome, from the Republic of the Philippines, Francisco Bustamante. Thank you. And his opponent. Also sponsored by Puyat Sports, player representative for San Miguel Beer, two-time World 8-Ball champion, former winner of the ESPN Ultimate 9-Ball Challenge, the most rec recent inductee into the BCA Hall of Fame. Please welcome an international superstar known as the magician from the Republic of the Philippines, the magician himself, Mr. Efren Reyes. Thank you. And gentlemen, you may lag for the first break. The lag to kick things off here, not many empty seats in the conference center in Chesapeake for this one. Of that, you can rest assured. Two legends of the game, and they're locking horns here for all of us to watch. Well, you know, Jim, these two guys are really genuinely great people, you know. I mean, I've, I've been to many places with both of these guys. And well, I can't, know, believe, you said, I can't and believe you said they were a better singer than you. No, well, they are true. That's Everyone, not pushing, loves that's karaoke. Push the envelope. No, seriously, he loves karaoke. And when I was in Munich, Germany, at the Munich Masters, I think it was in, uh, uh, let me see, it, was, it must have been around, no, 91, 92. Uh, I believe, first of all, he won the tournament. And boy, can he dance. I saw him by my dance floor, now he can move. You can watch him move around the table, he, moves, he has grace. He moves around the table pretty good, too. You know. Well, I can but, tell uh, you that uh, as far as Francisco is concerned, he's one up. On Reyes, as of late, he beat Efren in the World Nine Ball Championships a few months back, so this is a chance for Reyes to get a little payback. And I'm going to tell you something, Reyes wants to win this match real bad. They had to kick him off the table to start it out. Rack number one of a possible 21, and Efren with the wing ball, but nothing easy on the one. And if you notice, he really didn't hit him with much power, rather a softer speed, I don't know, I guess. The speed index isn't on the screen yet, but eventually they'll have they may put it up and we'll be able to really tell how hard he did strike the break. But anyways, uh, I know both of these players want this match extremely bad, even though they're the closest to friends. 19.9 miles per hour, almost 20 miles per hour, a little harder than I thought. I thought it was around 18, but uh, it was about 20 miles per hour. But they, they know each other's games inside out, Bill. Oh, they sure, they, they sure do. And, uh, this is this could be this could be a, uh, this one of the greatest matches uh, anyone can watch. I mean, that's uh, that's much talent out there. You'll see some of the best kick shots you're ever likely to witness. Both of these players, Reyes, they call him the magician. Back home, he's known as Bata. What a tremendous touch that was. It's very difficult to do what he just did. And he made it appear like it was simple, but uh, it wasn't simple by any means. It was extremely difficult to have that type of a touch to reposition the cue ball behind one, one ball, the two balls. The only ball we had to protect him, one. This is like waiting in the water, though, you feel. Just feeling each other out. Look at that already. Bustamante almost kicking that one in, but he's left Reyes with a chance. And the problem the Reyes has out there is he's getting from the two to the three. If there is a problem. Anyway, through, here's the one, which will be pocketed in this corner. And if I say it correctly, he'll draw the cue ball straight back somewhere in this area right here for the two. He should come up to set on the table for the three, which I do believe he was able to force it over, which I do believe could be his pocket ball in the lower left-hand corner. Maybe not, from my vantage part. Can you tell Jim if the three passes the five? Very close. Our over overhead camera doesn't really give us any indication, but he's very straight on this, too. And again, it doesn't look like it does, Bill. Okay, if it does pass, we'll say it does. We'll say the three passes into the corner. He'll draw the cue ball back. To this position over here because he can't afford to go too far over because of the position of the four and nine now if it doesn't pass he can get that cue ball near the middle of the table he's drew, he's drawn it totally down the table well i was going to say the possibility of a billiard onto the five yeah. but now the way that efren's played this i don't believe that three passes i think he was trying to get below it to play a good aggressive safety he's just had a good look I think it passes. I believe he played his ankle, which would uh, 
put him on the floor much more naturally. No danger. No danger at all. He knew it was available right away. Yeah. And uh, the way he played position on the three was what was much better than the way I drew it because mm -hmm. the way I drew it doesn't put him on the four as natural as the angle he's left himself with on the three to the four. Efren has already had to send one of his countrymen to the B side in Rodolfo Luat, second round in this event. And now he's looking to do the very same thing to Bustamante. But I think he's going to find Bustamante a more formidable opponent than Rodolfo Luat because Bustamante is just a warrior. I mean, him and he just. He has a strong desire. So many weapons. Oh, and so many weapons, right. And what a great shot, man. And a beautiful player to watch when he's at the table. Well, Efren Reyes opens the count here in Chesapeake. Takes the opening rack. One nil over Francisco Bustamante. It's a race to 11. And Reyes has kicked things off in ideal fashion. Let's talk a little bit about the strength, the power of Bustamante's break. And I really do believe that he sits alone in that, in the, in that area. Of the, of the game. I believe he breaks the ball harder than any player in the world. I remember in one instance watching Bustamante play another top Asian player, Chin Chun Yang, again at the World Championships. I watched him run seven consecutive racks. And then I also remember a time when Bustamante played Reyes in a European event and Efren knocked in nine against him. Huh. So if Reyes starts to get the feel for the table, the conditions, the breaking speed, what works, and what area of the table to leave the cue ball. Watch out. This can be a landslide. I like what Reyes is doing. He's going back to the same side of the table that he opened up the match with, but the ball is blocking a ball on the break. And he's done it again. And once again, he's not left himself ideally positioned on that two, and look at the proximity of the nine to that bottom right corner pocket. And if he can see this two, the 2-9 combination looming large. Yeah, and I have to make him a favor to pocket this 2-9 combination. The 9 sitting relatively close to the corner pocket, but yet not inside the pocket, so therefore very, very, very missable. Matter of fact, it's, it's, fairly, it's a fairly difficult shot. He played the 2. Well, I guess pocketing one single ball for Reyes is just like pocketing the 9, because if he gets a line on the next ball, as nicely as the ball's lying on the table, I'd be surprised to see him not get out, Jim. You see this man's name on well over half of the players in attendance in this year's U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships when they're asked to fill out their favorite player on their profile sheets. Many of them pattern their game after the great Reyes. Just coming up on his 50th birthday, boy, won't it be fun to see him on the Seniors Tour? <laughs> That'll be the end of that. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, he, he, he will for sure dominate the Seniors Tour. <laughs> He'll stick around and dominate this one for a while yet. Another player along with Strickland, you can bet they check out where his name appears in the draw. He's just making it look like a walk in the park and that's something that's also very characteristic with Efren Reyes. He is so casual, his demeanor, his approach to the game, he carries no pressure whatsoever. Well, from my experience of watching pool, clearly Reyes is the best player I've ever seen to watch for the game. Well, large statements, Billy. 2-0 Reyes now in front of Bustamante. And in total control, certainly in the early going. But what a chance he had at the break here. We do have a sponsorship bonus of $500 if you can make that nine off the break. And let's track that nine ball from Efren Reyes's break and see where it finishes. Just watch it inching its way closer to that corner pocket and that wasn't a long ways out from a $500 bonus. Near miss, but no cigar. Anyways, uh, that $500 bonus is, is certainly uh, an incentive to break the balls with a little more power, isn't it, Jim? And they're both well aware of it, Bill. They were practicing the break shot, both he and Francisco, before this match kicked off and kind of laughing amongst themselves. A little extra power imparted. Leffern lost the cue ball a little bit there and I think it's taken him out of position to the two. Yeah, I don't believe you can see the two which is positioned at the other end of the table. All the balls are grouped down this end of the table, the foot end of the table, with the one sole ball at the other end of the table with the two ball and I don't believe you can see it so he's going to have to push. And I don't believe, the, no matter where he pushes here, I believe Francisco will accept the shot because uh, too, many, too many options. It's going to be very difficult for him to, to push without uh, with the money accepting the shot. I'd wager, Bill, that if you asked Efren, 
who he considered his toughest opponent. Bustamante's name would be very high on that list, if not one. Right. Well, the reason Bustamante looks at this shot is we will try to cut the two in here. Reposition the cue ball somewhere in this area down here. In the event that he misses the two, he's got this wall of balls here for potential blockers. So therefore, he'll shoot this shot. He'll have two things going for him here. He'll have the chance of pocketing the two and also the chance of hooking Reyes if he misses it. Yeah. And now the possibility of the 3 8. Yeah, it doesn't look like he has enough room to pocket the three past the eight, so he's either going to have to play a safety or a three-eight combination, which really doesn't really lay that well. So he has a decision to make right now, and it's not, a, it's not an easy combination. You know, and the bigger problem, Billy, is that it takes the cue ball away. The natural angle in making the three-eight takes the cue ball away from where the three would go, so it's going to yeah. be difficult to negotiate, even if he gets the eight, position to the three. Yeah, he's got compounding problems here, and if you notice what Jim was saying, the cue ball then went away from the three, away from the, the three ball, but he overcut the combination. So therefore, he was confronted with a very difficult situation, and uh, I don't even know if he, if he chose the right shot, but I'm not, certainly not going to argue with his choice. I, I really would uh, win very many of those arguments. Ray is back at the table already, leading two to nothing, and uh, this combination plays a little more simple than the one that Bustamante had. More importantly, Billy knew he was going to keep that three near the pocket. Good positional shot from the three to the five, and this one's going to be on a silver platter for the magician. He a little soft, and uh, really didn't get to the position on the table that he wanted to end up in. He wanted to end up in, sh uh, in a straight, straight angle on the five, where all you could do then was pocket the five and stop at the six. Now he's got a, like a, a little bit of a tester here on the five, he's got to go cross table from position for the six. Which didn't uh, present that big a problem for a player of the caliber of race, or for race, I should say. So keep an eye on that cue ball, too, if you notice spots on it. That's exactly what they're there for, to give us all an indication, and more importantly, you at home, of what these top pros impart on that cue ball in terms of spin to get it into the area of the table that they want. You'll see it spinning very clearly with those red dots. And right now, Reyes has Bustamante's head spinning at 3 nothing, and he'll be breaking in rack number 4 to look to increase that lead, but this is a dream start for Efren. Yeah, I really can't find any fault from Bustamante's decision to play the combination because he really didn't have an easy or a good safety. And when you're at the table playing Rays, you really want to run out because even, even if you leave him a kick or anything like that, you know, he's so proficient in what he does and he's so skilled at kicking that there's no guarantee that it's going to work out well for you if, you, if you're playing safe. So I don't really, I don't really find fault with what Bustamante did. He had to try to win a game and uh, he just fell a little short that time. Ray is back at the table. Three to nothing. And it's going to be uh, a long road for Bustamante if, if Ray continues to play the way he's playing. Well, let's keep an eye on both the wing ball and into the one into the side pocket. That seems to be what Reyes has been attacking here off the break. Pocketing the one in the corner, the five ball. It's finally comes to rest in between the cue ball and the two ball. But had it not stopped there, he still wouldn't have had a shot on the two because it doesn't go in the upper right-hand corner. The nine blocks that particular shot. And now he's going to have to push again. You know what he lists as one of his favorite hobbies? Chess. So you really don't want to get into a pool game where he can turn it into a chess game on you, Billy. It'll, uh, it'll probably put you in the runner's-up position well, when the trophies are awarded. Excellent tip. Notice the position of the nine in relation to the two. Now there's a possible billiard into the side, the two, the two off the nine into the side. It, it, it looks like it's available. I don't know whether or not he's going to shoot it or not, but uh, I think he may shoot it because he may be fearful if he doesn't shoot it, Reyes might shoot it. Did he try to make the two off the nine? It didn't work out for him, but uh, you know, he did shoot it and gave himself a chance to win this, win this game. But he didn't really suffer much of a consequence in giving up a shot after missing that. You know, if you notice, the six ball blocks the pockets of the two, and Reyes is away with distance from the two without a shot, uh, so it looks like he worked up pretty good for most of the Just the outside edge of this too. Reyes was looking to play safe because he got that cue ball behind the nine. Yeah, that's exactly what he's done. I do, but I want to. Well, from this vantage point, now I look at the monitor, he can see the two, but, but he really tried to reposition the ball, the cue ball is behind the nine. Therefore, from uh, that standpoint, he made a real good effort. But the had to table, he's trailing three to nothing, and uh, he's really, really needs to come up with something here. If you notice the angle that he's left with, if you pop the two, the cue ball will then go in the direction of the six. It'll probably run into the six. 
and in the, the nine blocks of progress for the three, so he has a lot of work in front of him. And I don't like his chances of doing well in this particular inning. Not to mention the two is a very tough ball to start. Right. So he may even play safe with the shot. Now, I don't even think he tried to pocket that ball. I think he tried to get the cue ball behind the six. And, uh, and in doing that, I thought he used pretty good judgment. Maybe not much of a future for him to go offensive on that particular type of situation. There's nothing good that could happen for him. Ray is kicking behind the two, looking to reposition the two in the area on the table for the people to might be problem. He left them left quite a bit of distance. That's always a good ally to have. Well, we haven't had a chance yet to see Francisco's break, but he's got one of the hardest breaks in the game. And if he does have an advantage over Reyes, that's certainly one department that you'd have to give him a little check mark. He doesn't want to turn this into a tactical battle. Reyes's chest brain would certainly come to the fore in that regard. But what a shot there from Francisco Bustamante. Wow. And that was an excellent shot. He freed up the three from the nine, enabling him now the pocket of the three past nine into the lower right hand corner. Sort of like opened up the gates on that particular shot, giving him a really a legitimate opportunity to finally win a game. The ball was put quite nicely over the table. I don't really see any problems out there, Jim. I'd look for him to run out here and narrow the gap to three to one. I think Francisco knows that he's got to get back into this. It's got to be one ball, one rack at a time. But if he's to have any chance to beat Reyes, he's got to take full advantage of the opportunities that come his way. I like what he did there. He made sure he got close to the sixth ball. Any type of an angle being that close to the sixth ball would suffice. But now he looks like he's going to have to use the bridge or else stretch across the table and look like sideways at the shot, which is something I don't like to do. And that's exactly what happened. He had him stretch across the table, look sideways at the shot, and really didn't get the, uh, the action on the cue ball he anticipated. And now he found himself frozen up or near or closely positioned to the seven without an offensive shot. Trifle unlucky. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, really, that could have gone anywhere a little firmer. It would have bumped out and left the seven to the corner pocket. As it is, all he can do is run for cover. He may try to reposition the cue ball behind the nine, two cushions here. Or just, or just play distance and go two cushions to the bottom cushion. That's pretty good there. From the angle of these left rays, it doesn't appear to me that he can bank the seven. A safety is like very difficult. It looks like the ray is really facing the uh, dilemma here, Jim. He really can't do much of anything. So if he gets out of this, he surely will be a magician. But this is what the players watch Reyes for type of shot, they wouldn't have a clue what to do, and they're going to watch and see if they can figure think, it out. I think the only thing he has is the bank of seven back in this area here, while well, he tried to cut it in. And it's almost guaranteed to cost him rack number four. Left an easy one for Bustamante. Bustamante made an excellent shot when he played safe on the seven. Really, really leaving Reyes just about nothing. In the simple nine for Francisco to open accounts in this match. And down it goes. 3-1 the score. He'll be breaking off in rack number five. We're going to get a good chance to see one of the better breaks in the game. And Billy, he's got an action. If you were going to teach anybody to play the game, Francisco's action when he cues at the ball, it's not what you would want to try and emulate, is it? Well, it looks like to me that when you watch him play, you would have to think that he has to play every day to stay finely tuned so he can keep that stroke accurate and so he can be accurate when he was at the table because he's so loose in the back and there's so much movement back there, you would think if he doesn't play every day, he can't possibly be, be efficient. But it's all about how he delivers the cue through the white ball, like a dart on its intended path, winding it up. One into the side. He's going to have a shot at the two, or is he? No. No, he's not. Cue ball crawling around the eight, eight separating the, that shot from uh, from the two. It's it's uh, blocking it, I should say. It's. And look, he pocketed how many balls on the break? Can you count them out there? 
Uh, there's only six balls left on the table. His speed was 25 miles per hour. The fastest speed so far here on the feature table. The most powerful break so far. Well, he knows all about that $500 bonus money. So he's not going to be holding anything back on the break. Actually, he asked me before the match began. He said, if you break from over here, the line goes through the pocket? <laughs> That's exactly what he asked me. Well, well he's he pushed out. He wants to get that $500 bonus in his pocket. Uh, I think there's something to that. At least once. But Efren now with the option to accept or turn it back to his buddy. I thought it was a pretty good push for these reasons here, okay? If he's able to pocket the two, he may run into the five. And since the nine is blocking the pocket from, from the three, after running into the five, he may send him a screw somewhere over here. He may not have no shot. So I don't think the shooter has an advantage in this instance there, Jim. He was able to miss the five with the cue ball and end up in perfect line for the combination, something you couldn't even draw. And they get the book a shot on the two. Well, this has turned right around. It's backfired completely on Bustamante. But still, in spite of that, I still think he made a good push. And he just happens to be playing a magician. Nine down, and it cost him the rack. 4-1, Reyes in front now. He'll be breaking in rack six. But that one certainly wasn't what Francisco would have wanted. I don't think he thought Reyes would go for the two, Billy. Well, I don't know what he thought, but, but I, know, I know that he made a good push. Because there were a lot of things that could have went wrong with, if, if you accept that shot. Reyes hit it so perfectly, and that's exactly how he had to hit it to do what he did. And uh, you really can't expect anyone to do what Reyes did. So, that's, so therefore, you can't find fault in Angus Tamati's decision to push where he did. I really liked what he pushed. As a matter of fact, I, I thought the Reyes would pass the shot back. But of course, only Reyes knows what Reyes knows. <laughs> and Reyes is going to make sure <laughs> only he knows. <laughs> Pocketing a ball on the break. Two Land balls on the break. Yeah, landing pretty good on the two. I on the three, the, yeah, sorry, yeah, two yeah, went the, down. Yeah, yeah, the one and two are parking on the break, and he's landed in perfect line on the three for the side pocket. All balls once again, very nicely positioned over the table, and since Reyes is the player at the table, shouldn't, once again, shouldn't be a problem. Now he's going to have to draw this back to the bottom cushion, playing position for the six on the side. Well, he's going to have to put a good stroke on it and make sure it gets back to the bottom cushion because he's going to want the angle to go up table for the seven. Once again, you couldn't have positioned it better with your hand. You're looking very strong. You know, you know we wanted to win this match badly when we tried to get in that extra practice before the match began. Yes, we had to get Efren off the table for our intros and he wanted to get out there and just cue at the balls and almost unwilling to leave the table just as he is here, Bill. No different with Bustamante, he just doesn't want to give it up. And this nine, when he goes down, that's a 5-1 lead for the Magician. Very comfortable and now it's going to be down to Bustamante, wait for his chance and try and fire back at the great one. The only time will tell whether that chance will materialize. That's exactly right. Uh, Reyes is playing perfect out there, and there's no guarantees that uh, put the money to get back to the table. Even though Reyes still needs six more games to win the match, there really isn't a guarantee that put the money will get back to the table. Because we've seen Reyes run six and seven racks many times, and he seems to have uh, pretty good control of the break pocket involved on the break with regularity. So Reyes shooting a 927, very high TPA. A uh, Bustamante of a pretty low 706, especially when you consider the caliber of player that he is. Well, Efren winding it up now. We'll keep an eye on that nine. Using the cut break, Bill, he's trying to get that cue ball to the side cushion. And as he left Bustamante a chance at a 1-4 combination. It looks like, yeah, it looks like a 1-3 one, combination. One, three. Yeah. Now the problem that he has, not only talking the combination, but later on in the subsequent shot is the two and the six right here are tied up, so he's going to have to deal with that. So things aren't really coming easy for Bustamante right now. Sometimes you can play matches that nothing seems to work well for you, you know? Just everything's a puzzle. He's got a perfect angle here, though, to try and develop that two ball. But he's got to be careful here, Jim. If he, if, he, if he cuts the one in, hits this cushion here, and then contacts the two, he may, may end up scratching. So he's got to be careful here how he breaks the balls. We went into the six and ended up perfect for the two. 
And they'll softly roll the two in, maybe just nudging the green six ball, staying in line for position for the, for the pink four. Or maybe he doesn't have the angle to do that, so it looks like he may even be backing the two. No, not this time. I thought he had that opportunity to cut the two in, or an angle at least, to cut the two in. He's normally so fluent in knocking in those bank shots, and that would barely threaten the corner pocket. Francisco just a little out of sorts so far in this match. We haven't seen the best of him. Ray is very quickly jumping on an automatic or simple safety snooker behind the six, saying, I got you five to one. I'm not going to give anything away. As you said before, Jim, he's an excellent chess player. That's not one of his really good moves. I didn't care for the speed that he kicked that shot with Jim. I didn't think anything good could happen. Because hitting with that speed, what did he think would happen after contacting the two, you know? I would hit him with a little more speed to, to separate those two balls and probably move the two down this end of the table. Ray is finally missing a ball. Puts the money steps to the table. This will give him an opportunity to push another bead on his side. He trails in this match five games to one, but with an excellent opportunity to narrow the gap. Backhanded shot for F, for, sorry, for Francisco. We see that an awful lot from him. He's very comfortable playing behind his back. Yeah, he's one of the few Filipino players that really you couldn't consider him a very ineffective player. Yeah, he, he doesn't shoot very many shots with his left hand. He, he'd rather play behind his back. And that's unusual too, by the way. But he's very efficient doing that. He's got to be careful here because it looks like the six balls behind both the nine and the eight. So there's a two possible interfering balls. And, and uh, he ran to the seven. Now he's up himself a long shot on the sticks with a rather straight angle. He's going to have to hit this fairly accurate and draw it straight back in between the nine and the eight. A lot of concentration. He's going to have to keep the focus on this particular shot. That's the place simple. He's overcooked it. Look out. Yeah, he, he was a little bit too careful uh, playing position on the six, I think, and uh, ended up quite a distance from the six, which created the problem for the position for the seven. He just cued that one too sweetly. So up until this point of the match, we've been seeing a subpar performance from Mr. Hunter. What a recovery shot there. We need to knock those in. But no dangers. No, there isn't. When you have skills, the offensive skills of a Bustamante, you can afford to occasionally get out of line and recover. And this nine to pull one back. Well, you can hear some applause. I can tell you that that is Earl Strickland has just been knocked out of this year's U.S. Open. Danny Basovich, an 11-10 winner over Strickland, so there'll be no U.S. Open title for the Pearl this year. That's such is the way, the parody of the game, Billy. There's so many great young players coming up now that a lot of these top players that we've known over the years They've got to keep their A game up, though. They've got to bring their best game to Chesapeake to have any chance to hoist the hardware after this one's done. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to win a tournament, especially at the Calabar tournament at uh, the U.S. Open, is a very taxing tournament, very wearing, because every match you play, you seem to be playing against a, a very competent player, you know, a real good class player. Bustamante looks like he's been kicked in with a white. He has another crushing break, but this one is going to be turned right over to Efren Reyes. Let's take a look where the four is. I, this is what I think we're going to see Reyes do here. Notice the position of the five. It's behind the nine over here. The three is positioned here, and the four is relatively close to the side pocket. I believe you're going to pocket the one, play position on this kind of an angle right here for the three. Pocket the three, go one cushion into the five nine off the three. Since the four is positioned near the side pocket, he can afford to do that. But that's the angle that he's left himself with. He's either going to go one cushion into the five nine or draw the cue ball into the five nine only because the four is positioned conveniently close to the side pocket. Now, now the four is defending the side, so now he's got a chance to get out. Well thought out. The only problem for Reyes now is he's got to miss that seven in pocketing the four, and it's a thin clip into the side pocket. And I think he's got a bit of a problem here because the angle that he's offered with the four, the angle looks like it's going to go something like this toward the nine. 
that's the angle that I see, okay? Maybe he can make an adjustment or create another angle with a different type of a stroke. Let's see what he does with it. So it looks like it's going toward the nine, which it did. He brushed the nine, then he went into the three and came out with a shot. You know something, Bill? I'm not sure this ball passes. And there you can see it doesn't. So that's a little bit unlucky for yeah, Reyes. It doesn't pass, you're right. Just being a fraction out of ideal position. Yeah, it doesn't pass. And there's no easy safety here either, is there? Well, let's see what he has in mind because I'm always curious to see what he has in mind in difficult situations when there really isn't a good out. He seems to walk away from the table all oh, Look how quickly he hit that ball. Very little movement. That was so difficult to execute the way he did. Yeah, it's one thing when you've got the shot making capability of Reyes, the tactical brain, when you've got the touch of a surgeon. Oh, I'll talk what a about combination that. that is. That was an excellent shot in terms of both accuracy and speed of the cue ball. Very unlikely to reposition the cue ball for the six. Now he has an option he can go forward or he can draw it back. I like going forward, but he has to make sure that he cuts the sticks enough or else he'll end up hitting the point in that corner pocket. Mm, see how he hit that point? So he had to, had to cut it a little more and use a little more of a, a check stroke to get it away from that point. He's a little short of ideal pace too. He's not landed on the seven ideally. And this is a choice. And at five, two behind, he's got to start making the right one. Yes, he does. And going for the shot may not necessarily be the right choice. Like he did before, you know, he could, he could cut the seven down here, reposition the cue ball up here. That could be the right shot, because if he goes for the bank and tries to play safe off the bank, if he misses it, he may be using bad judgment. Now he's going cross side. Now this is, uh, this is very difficult for me, to, for me to shoot if I were he, but uh, I'm not he, and so therefore that's why he pocketed it as easily as he did. And I said earlier, Billy, he's a heck of a bank shot player, Pustamade. That one that he missed by a long way surprised me, because he doesn't miss many. In the meantime, up at this point in the match, it seemed to have been all Reyes, but if he's pockets the nine, he'll only be two games behind, drilling five games to three. He's definitely in the match. And he's done that. Five, three confirmed. Bustamani will be breaking in rack number nine. You can never count this man out when he's got that weapon in his corner of the ring. But hasn't it seemed like to you that it's been all Reyes? Well, the 5-3 scoreline flatters Bustamante. Absolutely, it certainly does. I mean, he certainly has an excellent chance of coming back in his back because of the score. Now, the TPA says it's all ringers, but the score says, hey, I got a chance, you know? And that's what you have to look at. And as Francisco comes to the table, his sights firmly set on that one ball. Just watch how far he draws that cue back. Comes virtually out of his bridge and if you on notice, his last stroke. If you notice, he switched sides to the table, breaking the ball from. And look at the nine tracking toward the corner. Making two balls on the break, one finally coming to rest in a pretty good position. But the problem here is not pocketing the one, it's controlling the cue ball. Notice the position of the three. The three is a very big ball here, okay? He's going to have to deal around that three in some fashion to get position for the blue two. Twenty-six point nine miles per hour. You know how hard he struck the ball break there. Twenty-seven. I mean, I don't know anyone that breaks the ball twenty-seven miles per hour. Well, you do now. Yeah. Well, I knew that before you broke it. <laughs> I don't know anyone else. I think does it. when they were registering the speeds, of all the fastest breakers, didn't he have one of the hardest breaks around thirty-one miles an hour? Wasn't that one of the I, hardest I don't. Speeds I don't was? believe so. I mean, thirty-one. I, well, I just it's been confirmed by yeah, Rob. I, but, uh, I remember correct. hearing that a while ago, but I knew that he hit him hard. Thirty-one. 35? Do I hear 40? Give me 40. 40 over here. 35 miles per hour. He's an auctioneer. <laughs> i tell you what. Well, I know one thing. If you can bottle this break, huh. you can sell it just about in any pool room in the world. Well, we wouldn't have to be worried about doing anything but selling that break. We'd be wealthy. In the meantime, Mr. Monster, he was very silently clawing his way back into this match because the Reyes is a player who seems to have made all the noise, but Bustamante is only one game behind. After parking the nine, it'll be five to four.
We're going to try and have a good look at Francisco Bustamante's very unorthodox breaking style right now, and where he pulls that cue virtually out of his bridge hand. Very few players can do that with accuracy, certainly like him. This is not something you want to work on at home, Billy. And I, it's really a mystery to me. You know, he's not a really a big man in stature, you know, he, and he's not extremely strong. But how does he generate the power that he does in his break? Watch it. Just about pulls it right out of his bridge hand. Still, the success rate is there. After we were bragging on his break, he came, he came up dry. He'd do it every time, Jim. Every time he do it. That's the commentator's curse, Bill. No problem whatsoever. Just let me know when you want me to stick it in there. <laughs> Red is standing at the table, finding himself only now with a one-game lead in the match, five games to four, and without a shot. So he's going to have to figure out a way to play some sort of a safety here. I think when he, when he has mind, he looks like he's going to play the one over here and the cue ball somewhere down here. Yeah, he's going to, whoop, he got away from him. All of a sudden, uh, Bustamante looks like he's well alive in this match. Yeah, a few chinks in the Reyes armor <laughs> starting to appear. And Efren hasn't played a lot of positive shots his last few visits to the table. He certainly let Reyes off there, but look at the problem he created near the cue ball with the, the four ball, the pink four ball. Yeah, the four and the five. five very awkward. Yeah, he just got his end of the table, so therefore... Look, he, he played that shot. He actually played the draw shot into that cluster to make that combination. Unfortunately, he froze against the five, and now he's hooked behind the five, but the one found his way back at the up at the back up the other end of the table. And he's left Reyes a chance. He left him a good chance. Not only did he leave him a shot on the one but he left him a shot on the one with the right angle to drop nicely for the two. So therefore, this is really ideal for Reyes, shooting the one that carries a natural angle for the two. I don't believe he can pocket the two in the side, and he's left himself a little thinner than he wanted to leave himself on the two. But in spite of that, I think he's still going to do well with the shot. He's such an accurate shot maker. And hitting it with the perfect speed. Left himself a nice angle, too. Get the cue ball back towards the middle. One thing in nine ball, you, you never really want to be straight in, not until it's the nine. Now he's going to have to be careful with this shot, because the angle that he's left himself here isn't one that plays natural. So therefore, he's going to be careful and make sure he stays down on this shot. It's, not, it's a very tricky shot. Well, he just softly rolled it in length for the six on the side. Sometimes all you got to do is like move a palm. That's exactly what he did there. He just rolled in, played position for the six on the side. Well, Efren has seen his 5-1 lead evaporate, and he wants to try and at least keep that two-rat cushion. And he looks like doing just that. And this nine will afford him the break-off in rack number 11, 6-4. Reyes takes rack 10, and once again, two clear. While we've got a moment, I'd like to thank a couple of our sponsors, Jailco Entertainment, makers of the new PlayStation and Xbox video pool game, World Championship Pool, along with Seagull's unlimited cues and accessories. Great turnout here this evening for the matches. There's no surprise that there aren't many empty seats watching Reyes and Bustamante play. Yeah, you really can't afford to pass up an opportunity to watch two players like Reyes and Bustamante because there are only two players like Reyes and Bustamante. One for the ages, unfolding here in Chesapeake. Rack number 11. Reyes quickly with a couple off the break. That wing ball in. And he's got Reyes. half a chance at the one, Bill. Not easy. Not easy, but very tempting uh, because the two ball is positioned at the same end of the table as the one. So therefore, no doubt about it, he's going to go for the pocketing of the one, which carries pretty easy position for the two since it's positioned down the, the same end of the table. He'll give it a real good effort here. Missing the one, but not leaving Bustamante an easy shot. He's left up a cross corner bank, cue ball position closer to that side rail. 
making this bag play a little bit more difficult. And if you remember, the last time Guatemala banked the ball, they missed it by a considerable distance. So therefore, the rails are banking fairly short, and that's the way he missed his last bank. So he should take that into consideration before pulling the trigger here. And still, if he's able to put the one down from the angle that he's left, that he's been left in, uh, can he control the cue ball for the two? Well, he played a safety and finally he finds himself scratching across side. Well, that was a horrible shot, and you could see him right away. He knew he caught that one too thin. Oh, absolutely. He hit it right on the head. Too thin it was. He needed to hit the one much thicker than what he did to get the results that he needed. And this is going to be costly. Anytime you get raised ball in hand, anytime it's going to be costly. One problem ball, and difficult to tell whether it goes, is the seven, the force, the brown seven near the nine. Looks like it passes O'Bill, and if it does, then everything is pretty much smooth sailing for Reyes. Right. Even though they're, they look like they're kind of clustered near the foot spot, the five leads to the six in the side, the six in the side leads to the seven in the corner, providing it does pass the nine. So therefore, really not much work out there, even though it may appear that there is. Well, there's a little indecision out there, indication that, hey, maybe there's more work than I thought. Efren still making his home in, back in the Philippines in Manila and Francisco Bustamante has been residing in Germany for a number of years now and pretty much terrorizing everybody in Europe on the European tour. They'd like to uh, send him a one-way ticket back to the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time I actually had an opportunity to watch Bustamante play was in Munich, Germany. I believe it was around 1991. They had the Munich Masters, which I mentioned before, by the way. And the seven will pass because the seven played position for it. And it's very. Um, wait a second. Maybe it doesn't pass. He played position for the billiard. And the billiard successfully completed. Seven four. Efren Reyes is starting to move closer to the finish line. The race to eleven. The winner staying on the A side of the bracket.